Guys, welcome to the General Banter Podcast. What I want you to do right now is drop whatever you're doing, smash the car into a wall. Why are you lifting this up? Because uh, it emphasizes how much I mean, uh, how much I do, how much I'm serious. Uh, get yourselves to the live General Banter Podcast in the Telegraph building. It's on the 5th of May. Tickets are available in the link below the video, you know. And uh, we're closing in on it fast. We've got some great, um, gr- great stuff coming up, great content, Maureen. Yeah. we got videos, we got sketches, we bought some absolutely very graphic sex toys um and my guests on the evening will be mark mccarney james mckegney and rory woods um any other reasons why people should go more well what else is on that day it's our wedding anniversary yeah there you go yeah so uh, come celebrate our wedding anniversary yeah. with us in the telegraph building i'm gonna bring Maureen out on stage and <laughs> present her the 10 inch floppy dildo that i bought down there there you are uh, and that's it. Great. That's it. Uh, do I don't know? Do we play some music in there? The buttons don't work. We'll do a little chat. Like we'll do a little chat like this. Now I'll play it over. Like news anchors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the General Banter Podcast with Paul and yeah, Jettis. Just to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'll just play the we'll play the intro over that in post. Uh, I'll send it to you. I have. You have it? Oh, uh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the General Banter Podcast. We're professional, we're on time, we're full of burgers. Uh, today's podcast, we've got sponsors, Maureen. Today's uh, podcast has two sponsors. Uh, the Cam app are back. Do you have anxious thoughts? Constantly. Are you restless at night? Or yes. do you, I'm doing an app, but we'll not get oh, into the ends of it. Or do you, do you just not, feel, do you just not feel like your best self? Making sure we feel Con, our best. This is the best conversation we've ever had. <laughs> couples therapy do you have anxious thoughts no that's rhetorical <laughs> are you restless at night or do you just not feel your best feel like your best self uh, making sure we feel our best should be our top priority and by spending a few minutes with cam each day you can be sure that you're taking the necessary time to prioritize yourself cam up helps you stress less sleep more and live a happier healthier life the guided meditations sleep stories relaxing music tracks and daily movement sessions are all designed to give you the tools to improve the way you feel guess how many people use this too slow. Over a hundred million around the world use Calm. Even wow. if you're, even if you've never meditated before, uh, you'll get the support you need to reduce stress, improve focus, and uplift your mood. This sounds like the thing for me, Maury. Yes. The sleep stories can help you drift off quickly and recharge your brain. We have utilized those. Yeah, they're good. They're my favorite. You put Kelly and Murphy on. He takes you on a guide of Ireland. Two seconds later, you're asleep. I've never heard the end of one of those stories. Yeah. Uh, but if you listen to this podcast and you go to calm.com slash banter, you'll get a special offer of 40% off Calm Premium subscription. And new content is added every week. Outrageous. That's calm.com slash banter, my guys. Be calm AF. We're sponsored, as always, by our friends at Manscaped. Um, I just, they send reads. I'm going to cut through the bullshit. This is what you do. You buy the, you go on their website, manscaped.com, buy the care package. One and done. It's all in there. Lawnmower 4.0, weed whacker, ball toner, also works on flaps, ball deodorant. If you got those vinegar nuts, get it all on there. It comes in a leather travel bag. It's got a pair of boxers in there that are as soft as a baby's pair of boxers. And, uh, <laughs> It's just all in there. It's coming up to summer. You, where are you going, Magaluf, for two weeks? Get them nuts shaved. But it works anywhere. Do you know they're releasing one called Clamscaped? No, they they're not. They're, they're not. Did. But uh, yeah, go to manscaped.com, use the code GEMBAN1, and get uh, 20% off. Outrageous. Insert a noise when I hit this button. <laughs> right, now we're podcasting. Now we're podcasting. <laughs> now, now we're getting the reason. Uh, my guest today is my legal and biological wife, Maureen. Well, you can talk now. Oh, hello. <laughs> you were told. Hello. You were, hello. You're told to be quiet. We've had a stressful morning. Um, we, none of our none of our baby boobs worked. Uh, our buttons no. didn't work. What was going on now? Camera fucked. Yes. Uh, shout out Black Magic. Shout out Black Scrap. Magic. I scrap. It could have done with some Black Magic. Yeah. Some goddamn witchcraft. Get the son of a bitch working. Tapes. Bring back tapes. Bring back tapes. Um, we're both we're we're trying to get this podcast out quickly for two reasons. You have to go home to look after our child or whatever bullshit you were saying. Uh, but we also are on the cusp of a burger coma. Yeah, it's a bad idea to eat first. But I did the old PT. Yeah, true. you know, because I'm 36 now and I'm basic. You know, I used to work out. You know, trying to look good, trying to attract some chicks. So I was just trying to stifle a vomit from all the 
peanut chips. Uh, but now I'm basically just uh, I'm basically just trying to keep the body together. That's all I'm trying to do. You can still impress chicks, you know. Well, I told you a second ago, someone was being a bit flirtatious with me in Lavery's. Mm. And you were like, what are you lying for? <laughs> 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 what are you lying for? No, I'd well believe it. Uh, yeah, I'm a sexy guy. When you see me out there in the wild. When people see you in real life, you know, they can't resist the heft. Yeah, and... Uh, tall, tall. I was in the <laughs> gym earlier heft. and there was a guy... You know, the PT was like, oh, he wants a photo of you. And the guy went, nah, not you, Karen Bartlett. And I was like, you would be amazed how many times they, I, I'm confused for Karen Bartlett. You know? I'm going to get a photo beside him. I don't see how I, like, I honestly don't see it. Mm. Why do people say that? It's funny. I don't know. Um, both nice boys. Both nice boys. That's yeah. what it is. That's what it is. We're just two, That's what it is. two nice fucking neckbeards walking around <laughs> being cool as fuck. <laughs> Unbelievable. But yeah, it is depressing to get to that point where you're like, I'm, I'm going to I'm paying this guy to make sure I can get out of his seat at 40. That's what we're going for. That's what it's all about. Longevity, getting out of seats. Getting out of seats. Knees being held together. You were starting to get a bad knee there, weren't you? Yeah, I've never had a bad knee. I think, well, I have. I mean... Yeah, obviously. <laughs> a bad attitude, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Many horrible things, but... <laughs> but, now the, but now the knee's giving you jip. I don't know, it's got all of a sudden got like weird sore knee. Probably sitting awkwardly, in it? Yeah, you, you do sit like you've... Do you remember that old photo of the woman jumped out of a building to kill herself and she hit a car? No, Colin, I don't remember that. And she was just like... <laughs> like, splayed all over the place. That's how you watch telly. Well, you know. Like, you'll see your legs are fully rotated, pointing the other way, and your, feet, and your body's forward. Maybe that's a girl thing. I think it is, yeah. Girls do just sit like a like a cat that's been hit by a car. Yeah, like like your legs are just paralyzed all of a sudden. Yeah. Sit underneath them. It's mm -hmm. not good. It's not good. I can't do it anymore. Just can't do it anymore. What's your, what are your plans fitness wise? What's your fit aspirations? I know, I keep saying that. I keep saying like I'm gonna get fit. Got fit before our wedding and then haven't done it since. And then just let yourself go fully yeah. after that. Just it, just like, went to shit. I was strong. At one point I was quite strong, but now I'm not. What were, you, what were you so. benching at your at your peak? Benching? Can't do bench. Man tw 20. <laughs> Grounds. <laughs> yeah. Just two bags of crisps on it. <laughs> bench what is it, hard. What is it about the, the default mode female who just is like, has, has no push power at all? No, but a lot of girls, a, a, lot of, a lot of girls can like squat, like mad weight. Yeah. Because they've got big legs and big arsenal. Yeah, and I could, uh, you know, I find deadlifting quite fun. Yeah. I can do like loads, like, but you know what I mean? Can't remember what I could do. It'll be nothing in comparison to what you could lift, obviously, but you know. But the bench is just non existent. Can't get the tits. Like, non existent. The tits like, if I all. could, if I was like deadlifting like 65K, my, like, honestly, with benching just a bar, which is 20, isn't it? Yeah. And even that was like. <sighs> all over the place. Working, like my, work, working my way up to the 2E. 2.5s on each side. It was really hard. <laughs> Two biscuits. On I can't do push-ups either. It's the same thing. Same move. Well, yeah, there you go. That's fine. Do the wee half push-up. But push you know, up? like the hang thing? You like make us like hang mm. and time it. Could do that forever. You grip that pipe all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did a lot of that in the gym. Yeah, it's funny. Like, Weird gym. Do you remember your, they had a they had a board on the wall and yeah. they would put up the times and then everyone was like, one minute, yeah. one minute ten. And then your dad was like, 45 minutes, and then they 60 it. seconds. They were like, we have to go home now. And yeah. he's just like... He was just, just hanging there. He's got those gorilla mitts, though. Indefinitely. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I know. Does everyone do that? Where they were like, but soon I will get in good shape. Yeah. But it's not tonight. But, to, you know, soon. When I start working out again, you know, I'm talking like that yeah. as if it's like. I'm only doing it once. I'm waiting for it to arrive. Yeah. And I'm not really starting to go there, you know. Like, so I'm going to have to do something because I think you just start. Nike got it right, man. Well, just, just do, do it. it. I heard another good uh, little fitness lesson. They were like, it was probably David Goggins or something. It was like, tomorrow doesn't matter. Yesterday doesn't matter. It's today. But you have to wake up every day and go, what am I doing today? What am I doing today? Over and over again. But then he is mentally ill. And also he doesn't have you constantly ringing up just wanting burgers. Yeah, we did have a five guys there. But listen, I was pushing it. I was pushing push it to the limit next door there. There's our McCann video calling me. We'll answer. Yeah. I'm doing a podcast, you silly bitch. Look. Oh, Jesus Christ. Never done. Here. 
Are you just out of the gym or out of bed? Out of bed. You look terrible. No harm to you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> here, have you kissed any chicks yet? No, sir. No, not yet. Sweet. I'll see you later then. <laughs> no more. <laughs> <laughs> here, I'm on. Do oh, he's young up on me, the bastard. <laughs> Okay. Uh, he, uh, what time is it over there? Oh, that's the one question uh, you asked someone. It would be five hours behind. Yeah. Be the morning, like, be first uh, thing in the morning. Um, what the fuck was I talking about? Burgers? Yeah. Yeah, burgers. Being fit and eating burgers. No, this is my point. You gotta, uh, you gotta go. You just gotta plan it in and go. No one enjoys it. No one gets into it. Like I, I have that one appointment a week, which isn't a lot, but I just go to it, and I never want to go to it. But then you go to that, you feel a bit better, you start to drop in a couple of other workout sessions around the place. But that's it, you just got to go. I've yeah. seen a great David Goggins video where, like, he was, this guy's a lunatic, like, he's running, and his wife is, like, driving in a car behind, did I tell you this? No. So he, she's driving, and she's filming, you can see him running, and it, by the way, it's the desert, and she's filming, she's like, so David meets up with this one guy about twice a year and they, they run like whatever lap of the fucking state or whatever, like 30 miles or something. And she's like, every year this guy beats him. This guy beats him, but uh, this year, he, you know, he had a trick up his sleeve or whatever and he just decided to put the pace on him and whatever. And as she catches up with it, like this guy is just fueled by spite, basically. Mm -hmm. And he's running with a t-shirt around his head and all he's sweating. And as she pulls up in the car, beside him he just immediately he's like i told that bitch <laughs> he's just like not this year he's not gonna give me this year fucking bitch I, I got that motherfucker mile 18 i just took a so he's just running along just absolutely fucking raging me, me and i did me and i talk about that the other week spite it's great for oh, wow. better motivation fueled by spite yeah we'll get you going no? yeah what do you what what we need to be angry about something you'll not do it for yourself but you'll do it to piss someone else off yeah true Revenge bod. That's what people do, don't they? Revenge bod. Like Chloe Kardashian did that. Revenge bod. Yeah, and she went from a, a what a big, a big. <laughs> she went from she went from triple H to skinny triple H. Uh, it, is OJ her dad? Yes. I mean, it. You know, it'd be fun, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, it would be funny. I mean, that happens in a mixed race. Uh, you know, when they do an offspring, you know, you can you know the black features, but with the white skin. And that's what you got there. You know what I mean? I mean, it would be funny, wouldn't it? She is very different to the other ones, like, but that happens too. Like, who knows? Would it bother mm. you? If. If Chloe. <laughs> is that what you, you really want to know this information? It'd be fun to know. Yeah, wouldn't it? It would get me back watching it. Would you? Yeah, I'd sit down for the old Kardashians. Kardashians. My, R Rachel just lives for Kardashians. I mean, so many people do still. Like she, is it still on or is she is no, she put on like over. reruns? She's a no way. No, yeah, yeah, it's over. Like no yeah. people are like, I I just start um, the office as soon as I finish it. I think she's like out with Kardashians. She's no, like, oh go my back. god, I'm so stressed. I just gotta fucking go down and watch Kardashians all the time. Yeah, I couldn't go back. It's just a lunatic. What about it's too uh, much. Rachel was in here um, the other day packing some bits. And she just fuck you know she's she's mental like she she just launched into this thing where she was like we ended up talking about CrossFit or whatever and uh, I was like oh I suppose you're in there doing like the handstand walks and all and they're all day, like they don't realize how stupid that you know when you're into CrossFit you're like no it's, you gotta practice at home man you gotta do the you never know when it's gonna come up in competition you gotta do the handstand walk you know you can't be caught off caught off guard like and then Rachel was like. I don't understand why I was talking to someone they couldn't do a handstand. I was like, who, I mean, who can't do a handstand? And Aaron was like, that is skinny privilege at its at its peak there. I was like, why can't you do a handstand? Let's just fucking do it. I'm like, what's the problem? You're like, well, you're seven stone. Of course you can yeah. fucking do it. Like, um, And then I said I could still do a cartwheel. She's like, I can still do a cartwheel. And then and then we were we just got food delivered. And she wouldn't let it. She wouldn't let it sit. Like, I, I was like, go away on home there. Go and fucking do whatever you're doing. She's like, no, do it now. Do a handstand. Do it, prove it to me. Prove it, you can do a handstand. I was like, I'm not going to stand and do a handstand. You do a handstand? Probably could, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not just going to do it in the fucking office while I'm about to, about to eat my lunch. Do it now. After you do a handstand? No, I can't. I told you I have no upper body strength. Oh, yeah, you would just crush your neck? <laughs> yeah, I'd be crushed. Yeah, no, I couldn't do it. Can you do a cartwheel? I used to be able to do those things, but I couldn't do it now. You need strong arms for that. Yeah. 
Don't you? Yeah. It's such a shame. You just do it as a kid. You don't think about it. And then you get like older and then all of a sudden you just more gravity or fatter? Both. Fuck's sake. <laughs> so shit, isn't it? <laughs> what did you work in like A&E? What happened to you? More gravity or fatter? <laughs> Why is this bone coming out of your leg? Too much gravity. Too much gravity or fat? Let's get on. Yeah, I think uh, of both. No, I have to. I think we'll have to get in shape, don't we? They were saying, um, there was some, I seen a post from some, one of them science boys the other day and they were saying like, most body degeneration is is just not being used. It's not really that much to do with age. <gasps> there you go. It's all in your mind. It's how old you think you are. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. Do you know how old my lower back feels? What? 89. And like, there's too much gravity and too fat. <laughs> too much gravity, too fat. <laughs> too much gravity and too fat. Well... I know. What can we do about that, though? We're not. I don't know. Well, you've always been like fit and able to move and stuff like that, but I don't know. I feel like I'm so. I don't know. Maybe it's just having a child, is it? Like you just end up like just living in your house, not moving. Well, I do move a lot. Obviously, run after him. Like, but yeah. Maybe you just need better form when you're chasing after a child. Yeah. You just be tired. You bend and over. You just do like a f- p- perfect lunge. Yeah. You know, lift them up. Proper hinge. There's actually so many like injuries you get, like mothers get from having a child. I think I've said this before, where you get that thing like brain in injuries. Your wrist. Like, yeah, in your wrist, I got that, and you go in and like, oh, are you and your mother, and like, yeah, it's from lifting a baby. So you're you're like angled this really weird way. You're putting all the like weight, yeah. so, like, and and also like you bend over unnaturally from your bed and all this stuff, and like over a cot, and you're like hovering. You're in bits. You're literally like absolutely racking yourself. Like. It, it annoyed me having a small baby because everything's low. low yeah. Everything's on the floor. Like we sh- uh, it, ju- it got too late before I was l- like, we should have got a change in. I know, but desk. we ended up doing so. We're here. Sure, it was all madness, Clem. Wasn't sure, it? it was all madness. But how many babies, how many videos do you just see like the dad turn away for one second, the baby just leaps to its death off the. I don't see any of those, but that's exactly why they're really dangerous. I saw a great one with a guy. Uh, was changing the baby and he turned to get a nappy and the baby just projectile shot up the wall. Just like, Bleh! it was great. He never did any of those things, Melina. He did one that when he started eating the solids that night where he just grew a tail and I was by myself and he shot on the old sheepskin rug. Oh, yeah. Those were the days. I know. We call on you to do so many of those by yourself. Oh. Why did not many dads do that, you know? No. Here you go. Look at you now. What a guy. What a guy. Speaking of, speaking of guys. Oh, there you are. You oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Jeez, what? 40 year old Dan Morrow. This is a documentary, but. Uh, what is it? 40 year old Dan <laughs> Morrow <laughs> time. suffers from a mysterious medical condition that has taken over his life. For the last seven years, his testicle sac has been growing uncontrollably. <laughs> <laughs> Same, bro. It's made me a prisoner in my own body. It's like carrying a ball and See when it comes to my nuts? Too much gravity? Or too fat? <laughs> the best way I could describe the weight for someone, if they're trying to imagine it in their head, um, would be to slit open your scrotum and put in three large bowling balls. <laughs> <laughs> so serious, the way he was describing that. He's not really describing another weight. He's literally just, he's like, and open your scrotum and put the bowling balls in there. Where is his penis here? I mean, even without the scrotum, where's his penis here? Have you carried it around? Is he wearing trousers or the bare legs? <laughs> He's got, I mean, I was going to say, that you're supposed to be just... <laughs> that is me. That is me from the back. I was going to say, as disturbing as the gigantic bollocks are, he did just put his bare hole on a sofa. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Have a bit of respect, you fucking... Yeah. Instantly in pain. No, but where is his penis? And it's a lot of... <laughs> Man, the hair is fucking out of control, bro. <laughs> Here, when you're disabled, but still metal. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where's his penis? Absolutely Inside. in there. In there. It, so it's very hard to move. And also, one more thing. Condition is so. Why do people make documentaries when it's this stage and not like, you know... <laughs> Two bowling balls, uh, bowling yeah. balls ago. Yeah. Why is it now that he's gone? This has become a real problem for me. Well, Surely, exactly. when it was yeah, like, like the it, size of bloody cantaloupe, you're like, well, if they made that, there's like, something going wrong. Yeah, there. like two years before, and he's like, if I could describe the way, it would be like slicing up in your scrotum and putting in one bowling ball. And now it's three. Now it's Next three. year it's nine. No, yeah. <laughs> Some cracker gets the nine. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Space Hopper Boy. I bo- I bounce around in my scrotums. 
If I could describe the weight, it's like a bag of footballs you take to practice. <laughs> where there's like 12 in it. <laughs> but they're made out of cement. In my testicles. <laughs> in my testicles. If you weren't sure what I was saying. I always uh, see people with terrible ailments or whatever, and the, but they still got good hair, you know? <laughs> like, why am I walking around here? Are you jealous of them? Some people, you know, like the, that, that, that dude that was like the Mexican guy that was the fattest guy in the world. He was like a fucking, like a landmass. He was uh, <laughs> huge, but then beautiful teeth, beautiful thick black hair. There's always, you know, you don't get it all. I've said no, this you before. Don't, you don't yeah. get it all. There's something, no. you know, you just, there's always something wrong with you. You can't have the, you can't tick every box. I mean, they're getting some nutrients in if, you know, if they're eating that much, so. It's all going to the hair. Oh, yeah. He's pretty, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like I know a guy, a new guy, when I was working in a wee TV company in Derry, and he drank so much iron brew that whatever was in that, like, what makes your nails grow? Was it like riboflavin or something? Biotin. Something like that. But there's so much of it in iron brew that this he's like, man, I'm fucking out of the way here and I have to cut my nails twice a day. <laughs> nails were firing out of him. Now, the guy didn't have blood anywhere in his face. <laughs> the guy was made out of, like, autumn leaves. He was, like, crispy. But his nails are flying out of him. He's just one big nail. My nails are a bit like that. Like I, like when the sun comes out, I'll have to cut my nails every other day. Mine have been the opposite now. It's really sad. I used to have good nails, but I don't know. I think just all the treatments and all have just drained me of all that. Well, whenever you first now. started to get the, the chemo treatments, there was a girl contacting me. It was a girl from that King It thing, King In It. Oh. She's like a vlogger, lives in a van. Quite a big following. And she was like, oh yeah, my, you know, she sent a, a link to a wig shop. And then she was like, she was like, my my nails were falling, my teeth were falling out. You know, went blind, one eye, fucking, you know. I was like, Jesus Christ, why are we telling me that now? Yeah, well, that's people do, don't they? It's kind of life, go, Yeah. I know you're doing this, but I'm going to tell you all the horrible things that happen. Yeah. I know what his problem is. I've just nailed it. What? He lives in America. And that's the problem? That's the problem. Because you go in when you've won bowling ball bollocks, <laughs> and they're like, that's going to cost you 78 grand. Plus the aftercare, and, and he's, he's like, like I'll wait till I get and three. And he's like, I better make you know the juice isn't worth the squeeze just yet. Is it three bowling balls for the price of one? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait a year. Is there a meal deal on this? Let me see what he, he's it going under the pesto. Oh, no, Colin. <clears throat> this is this is where I have to uh, go to urinate. Oh, he answers the question. Wait a minute. Smaller, I can lift it onto the toilet and pee into the toilet. But when it got bigger, there was always a chance to make a mess. So it was just easier to pee into the uh, shower stall and then rinse it down with the water. Well, it's probably been two years since I could use a normal toilet to urinate. Supporting Dan through his struggle is his <laughs> loving wife, Mindy. Mindy is my wife. Um, we've been together almost 20 years. She's she like McCartney. Watch it. You know, McCartney, someone who's always like, ah, I can't wait, meet a woman anywhere. And there's a fucking giant big bollocks there, still pulling chicks. Best friend. She's my everything. Okay, baby doll. Dan relies on Mindy for all his needs. Dan has become a prisoner of his own body, and I've, I've become a prisoner with him. He's not able to do any of the things that he loves doing. <laughs> BMXing. <laughs> Professional seesaw. <laughs> Climbing fences. <laughs> Tandem bike rides. <laughs> <laughs> Motocross. <laughs> Just anything where his bollocks would be a nightmare. Table tennis. <laughs> Just anything where you like throwing your leg over something. Yeah. Pogo stick. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why are they not doing anything about this? I don't understand. Honestly, Why is she it... going around and be like, we're just trapped here? You could... What? What is in there? Surely that shouldn't be there. I don't understand. I, I've, I'm i out of breath. You, you can get them. Is it like that gigantitis or whatever? But then people, but I don't know what's making it that big. Like, I know people have got, you can get like a, a, no. a, a load or like a very low down hernia in your groin. And it like shoots out into your sort this of. This is sorry. This is another reason why bag. we should not eat before this. Because this why? is making me feel ill. You feel ill? But that's probably just the amount of salt in it. <laughs> In the thing, in the ball. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was Just dressed. It was dressed. I mean, not like a salad. <laughs> <laughs> side of rocket. It was like professionally dressed with a dress on it. So someone's been 
ranch. Just <laughs> redress on it. Frank's hot sauce. No, but like it's been wrapped in bandages. Let's put it You're like that. You're not making this sound better. <laughs> But yeah, someone's put like fucking you know medical. He brushed his hair. It's fine. <laughs> it's worth a short and tie. Uh, but yeah, they put like bandage around it. But then he's you know double handed it in the in the shower, just pissing all down the dressings. Oh God, this is wonder, making me feel so ill. I wonder, like, stop it. I wonder is it scuffed up at the bottom? No, stop like it. Like the bottom bottom of a boat. Do you put a wee wheel on the bottom of it? <laughs> you know, like one of those wee trolleys you get out of B&Q yeah. with like, like four wheels on it? <laughs> oh, that would be the ultimate skateboard hack. <laughs> you could be like, I'm skateboarding, but I'm just walking. The nuts are on a skateboard. No, stop it. Oh, yeah, you'd have to get a wee Come trolley on. a wee trolley for it and just slam the balls in it. He's probably had it that long now, you'd miss it. Oh, if they, there would be an adjustment period if they got rid of it, like where he would just kept falling backwards. Did they take it off and his penis pops back out? Like, there it is. Maybe. Oh, if I was him, much. I'd be getting the full whack. I'd be like, if you're taking the balls, do the lipo, do the fucking, remove the skin folds, do the whole lot. Just turn me inside out. Mm. Bring me back again. Fucking hell, man. That's, that's just... You'd probably, no. I'd probably still piss in the shower, though, if I was getting away with it, you know? You'd like to piss in the shower anyway? I feel like, a, you know, if you're standing up to piss, a man should, like, a, you should have a sink for washing your hands and a sink for pissing in. It's a good height, you know? To, well, what's to the tr- difference in a toilet? Too low, man. You want a high toilet? You want something high where you just, you know, there's a bit of concentration pissing in a toilet. You want something you, you just... Get a, you can get a urinal in your house. You, you just know? hang the knob in and uh, you can text away. It's really, for, it's really for the social media is what I'm looking for. You just plop it in there and fucking... You know what I mean? Like a wee robot plugging yourself into the wall? Yeah. yeah. That's sad, don't do that. Or is it more, more like putting fuel in your car. Just put it in something. What do you think of our big fake ass down there? It's weird. It's weird. It's a fun texture. I'll, I'll review it on their website. It's a fun texture. Anyway, we, we had so many questions this week. Uh, let, will, we use the, will we use them to guide us through our conversation? <clears throat> uh, some of them are from women who want skincare advice. Oh. Yeah. My husband has a three bowling ball ball bag. What sort of... Uh, <laughs> I reckon the bottom... You know when you get that cream to put on your like cracked heels? Oh. I think that's what that guy needs in the bottom of his nuts. Please tell Maureen thanks for the sunscreen advice. I bought the ones he suggested and it's great. You need to get those affiliate links going. You could be making some... At least 60p. At least 60 But here, multiply that by two. 120. Ooh. Keep that going all week. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, what what would you recommend for me, skin-wise? Remembering that it's near perfect <clears> and, <throat> and, and milky. Your, skin, your skin's not bad. What do I need? A retinol. What's that? Vitamin A. Right. It's... it's the, I said this a million times. It's the only thing that, like, will change the texture of your skin. It revitalizes your skin. It makes your skin basically produce new cells and rejuvenate itself. And you need an SPF, protect from the sun. That's it. Well, I said to you, I had seen that video where the guy was like 70 and he worked outside and his arms were like fucking absolute, just old, like an old leather sofa, wrinkled, brown, all that shit. And he was sitting on a hospital bed with trousers, like just in his pants or whatever. And his arms were sitting on his legs, and the legs were perfect. Milky, milky, white and smooth, and the hands were just a disaster. Well, yeah, if you look at, like, the top of your legs that don't get any sun. Yeah. Not that it's the same, but yeah. Yeah. yeah do you, you do anything to your skin now? Uh, for a while, Freya had a good routine going on that I oh. chipped in and Oh, yeah. Chipped in with. Yeah. Retinol, isn't that it? Yeah. Retinol. Yeah, I had a bit of that. Had a bit you of that. that. It was, it was nice, but it was hard to keep up. It is even nice. Sometimes I'm like, could you be arsed? Like, I mean, we've had that discussion many times. So we're tired like, sometimes, like, if you're like, wait, well, we go to bed now, and I sprint up the stairs and do my two things. It's many, I know, but it's and then you, you, you'll, be in there, you'll be in there for 40 minutes. Like. It takes so long to take makeup off. It's so annoying. Some people love it. I honestly hate taking makeup off. I'm like, oh. Especially when we're down to one toilet now. You know, I come home from Lavery's, need, need that fucking midnight shit. And you're in there. Right, no one needs a midnight shift. That's not a that's a made up. I don't work normal shifts. I'm all over the place. My body clock is all jacked up. But you always do this though. 
<laughs> you're always shitting. You're the only person that will get out of bed at night to shit. <laughs> How'd you sleep last night? Oh, I had to get up a couple of times and do a full dump. It's just beyond. Sometimes you, you, it's funny because sometimes you come to me and you're like, I have my shit once today. I'm like, yeah, like what, like normal amount? It's a normal amount. Yeah. I was saying the other day, the, the, the closest I've ever got to constipation was I just waited till about two in the afternoon to shit. God's sake. <laughs> oh, it's a hobby for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty much. Day. Yeah, yeah. That is my that is my exercise. Squatting a lot. No, we, you just, I don't know. Anyway, how, that's not your skincare routine, those shitting. So <laughs> <laughs> let's we will maybe add in something there. Maybe. <laughs> my skincare routine. If you did one less shit, you could have time to do, to put some moisturizer on, like you know. I should habit stack. That's what they say. Leave, leave. We we'll get this new bathroom put in. No, I'm gonna get you some. Put stuff. the stuff beside no, the bog. Front facing mirror, so I can see myself. Uh, What's the back facing mirror? True. <laughs> True. <laughs> One of those mirrors you can't see. Yourself. When you want the mirror to see whatever you're seeing, also. <laughs> A window. <laughs> <laughs> what about us looking up uh, that, that mirror the other day? He was like, what much that is? It was ten thousand pounds. And we're like, ah, we're all right, me and a bargain will do Imagine. Ten thousand pounds. I mean, if you're absolutely flexing on the hose, like yeah. you would you would do it. Yeah, of course you would, yeah. Yeah, right in front of the toilet. There was that infinity one where it just looks like it goes back forever. And that other one through a glass window. It is, yeah, they're cool, like, but yeah, we couldn't. Some places have mirrors above the toilet in some uh, places. Have you ever been in a place now where you just t- you're taking a piss and you're like, I can see, m- I'm just getting a full... Yeah, I think so. A full frontal of myself pissing here. Oh? It's always scary because you're always like, Why? put your eye up to it, like, can anyone watch me piss? <laughs> but I just assume they can and I just put on a real show. What do you do? I bend over and push my dick and balls out the back. Do you, like, and, take and your trousers down, like, really slowly and seductively? I like guess. No, yeah. I just, I throw one leg up in the cistern. <laughs> you know, piss down the way. In your yeah, like, like I'm on a rodeo, you know. Like, <laughs> 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 no, that, yeah, that's, it's, we talk it's about It's always that, intriguing to know what guys do in, in like, boys' toilets. Cocaine. As a girl, you're like, what happens shitting. in there? Like, because girls are just cubicles, do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, it's just cubicles. Well, I, I think it's disrespectful that a lot of men's toilets are, they just expect you to pile in there like animals and piss right next to each other. I thought that too. I think it is kind of gross. Just a fucking, yeah. just forest of dicks. Yeah, like, are you not like pissing and then someone's also doing that beside you? I mean, it's not like, see, see, like, like thre- you're not in a festival. See, like, three arena. Yeah. When they make you all line up. That night we went to Always Sunny. Yeah. You're like, touching shoulders like you're, you're you're being touched on either arm as you piss and they hate coming off that thing man it's like leaning over a dishwasher steamy piss coming up it's fucking disgusting i just went into the cubicle and vaped <laughs> be like take that you disrespectful bastards <laughs> cute it for 10 minutes to go to yeah absolutely cover up the stench and then come out and piss but it is disrespectful in the sink um that's an episode of curb you need to watch when they open the restaurant and they put the wee dividers in. Nice. And he goes, you got to get dividers. It's not a bus station. <laughs> Very true. I do like one, yeah. Yeah. I love a toilet in a place where you, you go in the toilet, you shut the door and it's a proper door like you get in the house. There's no gaps. It's like a fucking oh, closed off room. Oh, the worst. That's what you want. That's my nightmare. I hate feeling like... What about the ones used to be in Mandela them? Hall where they just, they had a, oh, the, the door, the door was about a foot long and you could just see. You be, if you basically see over it and you're sitting down. Yeah. No good. Disrespectful. What are they doing that for? In case someone takes an OD in the fucking. I don't know. Right enough. Yeah, maybe. Disrespectful. Well, they're all metal, weren't they? Probably didn't yeah. wash down. <laughs> metal as fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just rust it. Absolutely disgusted. You d- they just clean it with a fucking hose. Hope you're both well. Uh, how are you coping Thank without you. Yellowstone at the minute? Think it's meant to be back in July time. Thanks Not for the well. Con- I there's a there's a void in in our life. Yeah. There there's something yeah. about good TV really just keeps a couple together. You know you have you're like <laughs> we have one <laughs> thing that we it. can share, and then the rest of our life is a mess. And then we we'll see when that falls away. You're like that's it. What are we, what are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? Here? Relying on you just to keep this whole system going. And I, I, I'm not—I'm not that interested in, in the prequels. 
No. To be honest with you. I, I kind of am, but I'm not going to watch it without you. So maybe I will if you don't want to watch it. Succession. What are you watching the minute beef? Uh, just finished it. Just finished your beef. Um, we started it. I'm on the curb. He's on the curb. On now. the curb. Watch it before. And do you watch that with Freya, or is that by yourself, Job? Uh, watch it with Freya. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. So you don't really like it, do you? What? <clears throat> no, I do like curb, but I don't like when you put it on really late at night because it's basically an episode of anxiety. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Like it's you're watching a program where literally everything is annoying and goes wrong. So th- to me, that's just not relaxing <laughs> for big. I'm like, it's very entertaining, but, but I need to watch it earlier. But what that's mean? what gratitude is, you know. You, you, Sorry, what? That's what it is. <laughs> you watch it and go, it's so stressful. And then you go turn it off and you go, my life is fine. And then you go to sleep. You know, well, yeah, it's things in perspective. It's like we see some horrific video online and then you're like, it is like why watching like serial killer things are like entertaining because then you turn off and you're like oh, i feel a cozy now <laughs> <laughs> i'm not being murdered <laughs> oh not me getting chopped oh. into bits oh can't wait to go to bed and not be dead <laughs> grabbing those maltesers <clears throat> but no but curb is just so like it's an episode of anxiety it's fantastic but like i have to watch it in a very specific time you know what i mean i've got i've just told you that before like i've got what weird about time? things i need to watch now mm. sometimes i just actually want to watch something that's entertaining and not in anxiety inducing hard to find anxiety inducing everything is now but but yeah we, yeah we need to get some yellowstone back and see even when it's going back to like wake the wake is that how it comes back or do they dump right. it all at once that's gonna be weird just watching an episode and fucking get give it give give it to me yeah do you not know colin has had hd give it to me <laughs> he now. will not pay attention to this it's the only thing i've ever paid attention to um Ryan McLaughlin, would you rather come home and find Maureen cheating on you with a 30 stone heifer or an older gentleman, 70 plus? What? Well, I mean, you already kind of, you know, you, you could get that for free anytime, a 30 stone fella. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> cheating on you. And then in brackets, he says in both scenarios, they're laying pipe. Why do people like love asking questions like that? Uh... What would you rather? You're having sex with this person or a worse CSK scenario? Yeah. Huh? Uh, let me think now. Are you really going to answer this? Like, you've actually going to think of which one you'd prefer? I, like, I always think, like, <laughs> in so, it better be an upgrade. <laughs> it better be an upgrade <clears throat> in some sort of way, you know? Really? Yeah. Would it be better being an upgrade or not? Well, yeah, if, you know what I mean? Would you not rather be the upgrade? Yeah, well, yeah, well, maybe if it was like some absolute tub of shit, I'd just be like, both of you are f- sh- crap people. That's what I'd say. I'd be like, it's just because you look like everyone else, Colin. <laughs> like people say to you, I thought you were, I thought this was you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was you, this 30 stone fat bitch. <laughs> what? <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. Neither would be ideal. Yeah, that's why these. I don't like these questions because usually the answer is. Because if it was a frail little seven year old man, I could just beat the shit and kick, just kick through him, just kick his body in half. Do I have any say in this? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, fine. Why, why would you rather bang thirty stone heifer <laughs> or a seven year old man? Neither. Who's hot in seventy? What famous seven year old? Bruce Springsteen. Is he seventy? Oh, that was either. quick. That was quick. The way you came out with that. <laughs> You fucking pervert. Kevin Costner? Costner? There you go. Hey, right, okay, I do have an answer. Yeah? The seven-year-old. The seven-year-old, if it's Kevin Costner. If it's Kevin Costner or... Smell like cow shit, lamb pipe. There you go. Yeah. Answered, I, that was a great question. Love yeah. that. <laughs> Turned out great for you. This is fantastic. Is Kevin this an Gos- option? Kevin or? Costner is a sexy man. He is a sexy man. The problem is, if you actually make it long enough to be a sexy seven-year-old, who's a sexy seven-year-old woman? Oh, the age no, question. Nobody. No. Nobody. <laughs> What's the cutoff for women being hot? 30? It's probably like 42 or something. <laughs> After that, just stinking. Not me. We're SPF. We're SPF. You'll I'm be uh, like you'll be like all hunched in your back with a wee stick and all, and then just the face of a geisha. Yeah, hopefully. Geisha? Geisha? <clears throat> hopefully. Doll face. What's that noise? A big engine car yeah, downstairs. Um, <laughs> uh, I like to see it. Philip Carl, uh, do you ever think about doing an open mic night at the club? And how do you think it will go down? Um, oh, we've thought about it many we've, we've times. We've had many yeah. ideas, but honestly, it is massively time-consuming, booking two yeah. nights a week. 
it's so, already time consuming and an open mic would be it would be the equivalent of putting on another week's worth of show because there'd be so many people to organize yeah people would just be queuing up Fuck, you'd have to it's disrespectful but you'd have to do that thing where you just sign up and then we pull names out of a hat i know i get why people do that now. because there's no way you could allocate slots for like eight to ten people a night yeah every fucking week and do it fairly you know people would be like i'd be messaging for fucking the only good thing about it is there's no um like discrimination yeah. and it's an open mic so if someone asks for a gig you go right well this is the next slot when you're running an actual pro comedy night you kind of have to fucking pick and choose correctly and it's a good way to, to see people how they get on yeah. on the stage and it would be great to give people the chance of just being like go for it because you get inundated with messages and it's very hard to know who's good who would be good on stage blah blah, blah. so it would be it would be great mm -hmm. but i think if it was our only job could possibly happen it's hard when there's a lot of other stuff going on and also like an open mic you basically have to make it very cheap or free in which would be hard to produce a show mm -hmm. to the sort of level we like to do it at because it costs money to put yeah. on a show like that you know and pay everyone to like be there and all that stuff so it might happen like eventually what well, pavilion do it you know when one, they're one connected a to library so one a month could do one a month mm. could do one a month and just start it at three o'clock on a sunday and run it three to twelve at night you could do one could you ever do one do you think just before our show just do like an hour before is open micers and then it's the main show maybe and you can just come early or not you could do like do you ever see uh in the comedy store the way they had people just kind of go up as people were coming in so disrespectful to that but you could do that you know, just have like the guy playing the piano in the corner. Clink, 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 oh, clink, yeah. clink, clink. Yeah, and the guy's oh, up there like, like yeah. hey, do you like anal? You know. Just keep talking. Good work. It's a good way to get seeing people, isn't it? And then it'd be like, you get to come on the microphone really obnoxiously and be like, the real show with real comedians starts in 10 <laughs> minutes, not these useless fucking bastards. Okay, starts in 10 minutes. It actually would be funny to have an MC who was just really horribly, brutally honest, even yeah. like, like two. <laughs> well, there are like in a, you know New York and there's certain places that, where the attitude is like like yeah. someone will die in their hole and be like oh fucking hell not be back yeah but really over the top almost like a can't do that in Belfast everyone will know people so know, you you're awful your girl Erica was on last night and uh, her jokes are fairly rough which is yeah. great and um, there was a girl at the back woman at the, it, it looked to me like a couple who were like in their twenties and they're one of their parents with them. And uh, your girl Erica was doing the jokes, and this one went, "Oh no, that's just offensive." Now she's just offensive. <laughs> and then I went up on stage and said that I, I had just heard someone say that, and I was just rock solid in my pocket, <laughs> sideways pocket boner. Colin, well, you can't say that. I did say it. Well. And you know what happened? Laughter, <laughs> laughter aplenty. You know what I mean? <laughs> Michael Skillen, <laughs> parent question. <laughs> Mike and skill and be sk uh, he should be a rapper uh parent question have you ever had to deal with other kids being wee dicks to yours other week another kid tried to hit my wee lad the other was probably only four or five but first time i felt there's about a child oh yeah i'll not <gasps> i'll not do well it's I'll not, not happened to us yet like but i'll not do well i don't think i don't know if you, that's a hard one that's do you know really if, hard do you know if uh eddie come home he's like he's like oh i just don't feel good i'm being bullied at school i'd be fucking oh. columbine <laughs> Columbine. Columbine, yeah. Columbine High School. Oh, I, I Who was know. it? Don't matter. <laughs> Just tell them all the bits. God, Jesus <laughs> Just that blood bath. You're gonna, you're gonna, there's going to be so many examples in our life, isn't there, where you just overreact to something come in, <laughs> burst into his school. What the fuck? Like, misunderstanding. The day he slept and chipped his tooth, I was going to burn all the rugs in the house because he slept on a rug. <laughs> I was like, who the fuck banned rugs in here? You know? gives me very, like, Sleep and Beauty vibes here. The wasp went on him that day and he fell through the fucking patio window. Trying to get it. Deesh. Be punching a wasp. Yeah, not going to do well. Yeah, you, yeah. They'll just snap. Um, I I'd, be the, I'd be the dad running on to, like, a football pitch to deck a referee. <laughs> fucking Sam my son off. He only bit him. Fucking world of eleven. <laughs> Is this not rugby? No, it's not. It's golf. <laughs> he won't be playing golf. What am I talking about? Yeah. It'd be so hard saying that, though. I don't know. I don't know how I would deal with it. 
depend how another parent dealt with their child doing something, I think. Because at the end of the day, small children anyway, they don't have control over what they're doing and they don't mean it. No, that seemed to be a big it thing. It doesn't mean they're a horrible person I, or a horrible parent. When I was younger, which was like parents fighting each other over what kids what? did. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. I remember on our street, there was like a bunch of parents fucking hated each other. Stop. And then I one, this. I was playing, like messing about in the street one day, you know, some little street kids. <laughs> hanging about in the streets, uh, you know, yeah. ba- throwing bangers, riding bikes. Yeah. And uh, one, this guy's mom was just like, knew that the other guy was sort of bullying him a bit and was like, you can fight him, but fight him in my driveway. And I just watched these two boys try and fight each other. And she was watching. She was, she was like, get it out of your system. Fight in my driveway. And the son was like, what, are you fucking serious? And he's like, no, fight him now. And these two beating ahead the of each other. I don't know. How do you deal with boys fight like... It's not a bad concept just to be like let them let them at it. Yeah, because like one part of my brain goes because she did. She yeah, wa- she was like, wasn't that fucking stupid? She was giving out them like in Yellowstone, just put them in a ring and be like, right, beat the absolute lumps out of each other here, and then yeah. get it out of your system. <laughs> your man needed his lumps beat out of him. <laughs> I'll stop it. That's what happened to him. I'll be I'll be uh, oh. I'll be ripping that scenario. Only it's a fucking under 11s football match. You want to fight? Fight me. <laughs> just decking a ten year old. You want to fight? I'll fight you all fucking day long. Know that like movie style <laughs> punch in the guts, which no one ever does. Oof, <laughs> oof. And the guy's like, oh, oh. And you're saying oof, <laughs> oof. Pow, kaplow. Take that. Body shots um, don't look like that. No one gets a big oof in the guts. You have, you have to go like, oh, we <laughs> jab, you know, we jab in the face, <laughs> right in the side, and then you, your liver caves in. Right, you're getting excited now. I the am, idea of but no one's, be, no one's getting buffed in the guts right, in real life. There might be no buffing in anyone's guts here. Let's hope there's no fighting. But, uh, I, no, I you know could you let me buff you in the guts, Boof! and you wouldn't feel anything because you know what's got the buff to the no, guts. No, it would. It definitely would hurt. Yeah, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Con. Like in movies, they get Con. they get buffed in the guts. Con. Of course, and they it collapse, would hurt. And they collapse. <laughs> I don't think so. Of course it would hurt. I'd let both of you both me in the guts and about it's fine. Yeah, but look at the size of you. Come on, dust. <laughs> <laughs> that was six, eight. No one knows that. 24 stone. Big lad. What height are you? Five, five and a half. Specific. Yeah. <sighs> Does Maureen have an equivalent <laughs> of your man cave studio in your house? No, our whole house is just Colin's cave. There's Colin no. stuff everywhere. Every door has a coat on it. Every every surface that is flat has a pair of shoes on it. Because mm. you come in from every gig and take everything off. So everything is your wardrobe and everything is Colin land. But my, my, I don't have, my, my man cave is our office. It's not really my, my man cave, like. It's a function, you know, we go up and we sit down or we do work and then I'll yeah. record in the corner. It's not like no girls allowed you know and i'm up there you know smoking cigars and you know what i mean we do work in it it's just our office at the house yeah you have that but yeah that has all your stuff in it like all like guitars and bits and Aye. books or whatever Aye. no well i have a room with all like my makeup and stuff in it yeah and her shit no guess that's it you do need it i think you need it everyone needs their own room because you know what hey guys you get married you have to share a bedroom you don't even get your own bedroom anymore so you need your caves you know what i mean you gotta have your room Mm. It's like having your own room. Like at the start, you're like, "Oh my god!" Like you and me, like we slept in a single bed together. We barely fit in a super king together. And I were like, "Oh my god, it's so annoying." We literally go and give us separate duvets. I, you know, because our sleeping patterns are so different. You have nothing to prove anymore. Like there's no need That's to be I mean. in the same like, bed. We used to sleep in a single bed and like you know, like synchronized swimming, turn around and all, being like, "Oh my god." Me so would just hard. fucking just full blown pins and needles in my whole yeah. left side. Like, how did we fit? We didn't, obviously. But do you know what I mean? And then you just get married and then you just are like, now we have a house, now we need our rooms back. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's I, what you do. I, I do my midnight shit, I brush my teeth, you do your 40 minutes thing, you come in, couple of fucking daps like that. See you later, lad. <laughs> Jokey slap in the ass. There's Costner. There's, there's, a, <laughs> there's an old print out of Costner. <laughs> Frank Smush yourself into a paste there. <laughs> I'll be down the bottom of the room. <laughs> Stop, it. Stop it. We could have two beds in our room. Yeah, it's quite long. It's a long. It, it's the most like a cave in the house. It, it's got like a, you know, one of these slow, slant, what do you call it? Slanty roofs. That is like a cave down there. I should have an actual man cave in that wee side fucking door we have in our bedroom that goes into nothing. 
Yeah, just one absolute... little bed, like a man Frank, and you know, man Frank, did man you say? Frank, <laughs> Fran Frank. Yeah, if it was an actual cave that you just went in and just hibernated for a minute, it'd be great, actually. Andy Aston, great to see Mrs. G looking so great. Keep your dick in your pants, <laughs> Andy, you fucking pervert. What are you just saying? <laughs> Not old enough for your tastes. <laughs> no. Do you he think knew this was unlocked something I never knew? <laughs> Del Gelfs? Gelfs for life. Yeah, you're so young and yuck. Yeah, I'm so yeah, man, I'm fucking <laughs> elastic skin. You know, <laughs> juicy. He wants it. Uh you like your men like old <laughs> like a beef jerky. Tough and old. Do you think someone like what do you think something like what Rogan has done with his comedy club would work in A and I? Yeah, if he opened a club here it would do well too. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. the most famous guy opened a comedy club, yeah. Um it yeah, I think it would work. It would it would be a lot smaller venue and it would absolutely yes be run by me. The the difference with Joe Rogan's one is it's run by a comedian. Yeah. Which is a, makes a big difference. And especially a comedian that's worth, you know, fucking six hundred billion and isn't worried about it really even doing that well as a business. Well, it is run by him, but obviously he has loads of people running it for him. Well, he j he basically and he basically moved the whole tape. Well, yeah, that's for baller. The comedy store was closed for COVID. Yeah. And he was go in, you know, in the process of opening this new club. And he basically said, we don't know if the comedy store is opening again. Do you want to come down to Austin and work here? All the main bookers and team and bar the bar manager and all. And they were like, yeah, sure. And then he had a bit of a delay in a venue or something, and he just kept them on salary. He's like, we're not starting work yet, but I'll just keep paying you like you're working. And, for, then, and, it was for, and then he poached them all? Yeah, it was so for they like, don't work in the comedy store in LA now? No. <gasps> He's oh basically God. like, move down here, we're going to open like next month. And then he was like, it's not going to be next month, it's in like another five months. And he's kept paying them all like full salaries until they started again. Wow. I mean, that is a smart move. Like... If you have the money to do that, that's, that's me real. throwing blank checks out wow. of my hand. Wow, oh my God. Balling out of control or Imagine what? being in the comedy store, though, and just like all your staff being poached off you. Mm -hmm. That have worked there forever. But it might, yeah. yeah. Wow. So there you But then, it. you know, Austin was the new fun place too. Wasn't it like LA is all a bit different now? Yeah. Mad. Insane. We're going to Austin. Oh, we're not. Uh, I just remembered. <laughs> you need to book that again. Why? What do you mean, why? The moment has passed. Oh, shut up. We'll never go again. <laughs> Out of respect for your mother's birthday, I'll never go again. Go on. <laughs> Out of respect, I will book it every May and I'll not go every year. I'll cancel it again. No, I'm totally over it. Just book it a different date. <laughs> Best ramen in Belfast. I don't know. I, Erica Ehler, who was headlining Lavery's last night, was like, she's Filipino. Yeah. She's half Filipina, and she is a Filipina. I don't know, but she uh, said she just went for ramen, and she's like, it was terrible. And I was like, oh, you should have fucking hit me up, me and Aaron, the noodle bros. Could have sent you in there. She said Kamakura was shite. <gasps> Their ramen's not great. Their sushi, great. Mm. You know, but whatever. Um, uh, there you go. But uh, that was, she would have been, I was going to say, Aaron's ideal lady, but he does know her, so. She's just, you know, does comedy, wants to have noodles before a gig. Snogging. Perfect. Uh, back. What's something you keep meaning to do but have put off for years due to having no time? Oh, fucking get the notebook out. Um, Literally everything. Uh, shoot last year's special. Doing it next Wednesday and Thursday. Why is that? Mentally ill. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you mean people plan these things? Yeah. That's not, not how it works. this guy, no. You're a spontaneous king, aren't you? The spontaneous <laughs> king. Write that down. That's the name of the fucking podcast. Uh, no, I don't see the problem. There's not really. But I think it's because everyone else is very precious about things. And you're like, no, oh, well, it's fine. I'll just do it again. Or, you know what I mean? You're always like, no, I'll just do it better. This time it'll be fine. You know? Well, there's no one else gets on like that. It's funny. What, just a fucking scatty bastard? Yeah, like everyone else would really plan these things. Be like, oh my God, that was a really good hour. I'm going to make sure I record it and do this. And you're like, no, oh, I didn't get time. Maybe we'll do it next year. You know, you're very just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, no one's that good. You know what I mean? Okay. Everyone's fucking shite. <laughs> and I don't mean like, no, as good as me. I'm not that good either. That's why I'm not that precious. Who gives a flam fuck? 
Oh, it's not quite crafted yet. Yeah, when's it gonna be crafted? When you get reincarnated as Richard Pratt? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you unfunny bitch. We live in Belfast, you know what I mean? It's like shouting, it's like shouting into a vacuum. Oh my god. I'm the boss comedian. Who get no one cares? You gotta be English and a fucking trans non-binary. Lesb. Yeah, get over it, guys. Of colour. Anyway, back to the question. I'm a non-binary of colour. Um, I'm non-binary. Colin. In a race way. Now, was the question about getting things done? Because this is what happens. What have I put off that I've had no time to do? Uh, fitness, we already talked about that. I've said to you before, like, I need, a, I, I need like... You're recording your special, obviously. I need, like, <laughs> six months in a different country with no internet. No, we also just need staff. Yeah. We've come to realise. Because I was just saying that about Joe Rogan and his comedy club. Like, he has people running that. Like, you are actually a comedian running that. Whilst also doing your own comedy and two podcasts and have a family. And, you know what I mean? There's like, you know. You actually do. You get to stage, you just need people, don't you? Yeah, I need That's what we need. We're, we're behind because we just need people, probably. Let's have a hiring day. Let's sit at a desk. You know when people do that and like say the road and be like, right, come on. What can you do? Hmm? Okay. Yeah. You're hired. Let's go. You need a bit we, general banter. Ser search for staff members. Yeah. Can we do like an X Factor edition? And then like experience in pretty much Anything. everything. What Pre can you do? Pretty much class Come at everything. Come to us with your skills and we'll probably say that we do need that. <laughs> Anything to start anywhere. Yeah. Coffee? We need someone to make us coffee. Yeah. Correct. You said you wanted a driver the other day. A driver. Like, I'm so sick of driving. Like if you anyone, if driving. anyone out there is a fan of this podcast and isn't mental and is like, man, I'm just, <laughs> I'm stuck in between jobs. Wait, that's not gonna happen. And then, and then I'll just like, I'll go. Do you want to just come down to this office and tidy it and straighten it out and go to the dump once a week? Let's go and cleaner. Then, and then I'll have no concept of pay, so I'll be like, I'll give you about fifteen hundred pound a week if you want to just empty the bins. <laughs> it's it's no, it's it's a terrible. This would be a terrible job already, I think. What else have you had no, no time for? Do. Doing up that Mercedes that's lying at the house dying. Yeah. A whole house at renovation. And see, when you're like bad at doing decisions and you're just like, oh, someone do it for me. <laughs> no, I like, as I, like, I do enjoy it. But it's the actual now having to figure out the timing of all this stuff. That's boring to me. Can't do it. Don't like it. Our life is very much, oh, we we'll, we'll so get much. round to it. We'll get yeah. round to it. We'll get round to it. It's happening tomorrow. Fix it. Yeah. Maureen, is there any lines that Colin isn't allowed to cross with regards to his comedy slash jokes? <gasps> P.S. Your son is so like his mummy. It's hard uh, work having a child, but it gets easier down the line. Oh, uh, tell you, it actually does get easier. Eddie's like class now. Now that he's like three in a bit. He's like, you take him to shops, you take him out. It's great. Whereas like a year ago when he just never slept. Yeah. He didn't sleep till he was three, three like legitimately three years old before when, he would sleep past 2 a.m. When you can start to communicate with kids, it's, uh, it's tough. a lot more fun, isn't it? Yeah. No, he's good. Now. What was the question again? What, is, there a line? is there any lines I can't cross? Um, I mean, I always like pull you up on things, but I'm like, no, you can't say that. I think the only line I have is if someone, any comedian, it's just coming across as an asshole. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying there's anything you can't joke about if you do it well. But if you're saying it and you just sound like an asshole, like, don't do that because you look bad then. That would be always my line. Like, don't yeah. say that. Because now you seem like an asshole for saying that. I feel like you weren't keen on me doing a Chris the christening bit, but then it turned out to be great. Uh, no, I don't know. I didn't mind. I just was maybe there were some things I was like, don't say it like that or something. I don't know. Yeah. And did I take that on board? Probably not. There you go. Lesson learned. Uh. <laughs> but like, yeah, I don't know. Is there lines? But I think to be I'm fair, I'm, you you're quite good at judge. Oh. Like you're good at judging. Like you'll you'll never like. Well, you don't have those opinions anyway. Like you would never say something that's just horrific, and there's no, I don't know. Yeah. Reason, intelligent behind it. Like there's always like, it's always referring to something. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh. But yeah, I see a lot of people says, do it. I just I tap dance through the laser beams. There you go. That's fine. That's always fine. He but said that to me. Sometimes people just say things and you're like, you sound like a dick now. I can't tap dance. Uh, have you any holidays booked? What would your ideal holiday look like? Oh, that's the thing we've been putting off, to be fair. Yeah, we keep, we've been we keep going like, we should really go on a holiday. 
It's because we our, haven't been on one. It's because our life four, is, so, four is, years. is so manic a lot of times. P- you know, people do have this. People are like, "Oh, I know that I'm working for the next fucking three months, and then I have two weeks off." We don't have that. We don't have that. <laughs> we would go on holiday. Describe if, your week. No one would believe the amount of work you do this week. So this week, Monday, you're working. Well, we hosted, Monday night, we, we, you host, had, we hosted the tour show, Vittorio show in Lavries. Right, Vittorio show on Sunday there. night. Monday, we banked a podcast. You did a podcast, and then you went to Queen's to do Queen's a Queen's Comedy Club. The next morning, so again, home late. You're yeah. not at home that night. The next day is a Tuesday, and you did what? Record again? No. no. Something? Maybe home it Tuesday. Tuesday, I did work at home all day. You were working all day. Uh, Maybe you were home that night, actually. Yesterday. Next day, took Eddie for a walk. Came up here, did work. Lavery's came home last night late. Left this morning. You're here now. You're going to Lavery's tonight. I'll not see you now till tomorrow. One, one o'clock shoot, in the morning. Shooting with McCarney. You're away tomorrow. Then you've got tomorrow skilling. night. And then, so I'll not see you tomorrow night either. So again, all these bedtimes by myself. Uh, then on Saturday, same thing, a gig that night, and on Sunday, a gig banger, that, two gigs and banger, two gigs and banger. Night. You have one on Sunday, and then you start the whole podcast recording, posting two libraries, and in that time, we also have to book libraries and book. All and then shows. all next week is like two more libraries. I was going to record that special thing, yeah, and then the live podcast on Friday. So that's how you're like, how do we fit a whole? There's no, where do you get a holiday? And that's why we don't get anything done because we're like we don't have time. And this is why I'm gonna have a staff. What's the word? Audition, Entourage. open call. <laughs> yeah, job interview. I think it's called job interview. Casting couch. That's what they call we're it. Shit, at it though. Like if someone came with like was like I could help you with this stuff. We're like, what do you mean you can help us? Doing what? <laughs> like, yeah. We'd be like, what do you? We don't need any help. Yeah, busy. <sighs> I think that probably doesn't help the fact that you know we're scatty about things. Would you ever consider doing a one-off podcast with all the squad around a table chatting about your experiences so far as a comedian? No, because that's all everyone does week to week on their fucking podcast anyway. Me included. <laughs> We're all shite. That's that's my new message I'm putting out. Really? Everyone's fucking shite. You just get so bored quickly, don't you? <laughs> what? <laughs> so funny. Shut up. You just win the lottery. What's your first purchase? Staff. <laughs> just <laughs> slaves. <laughs> Bring back slaves. <laughs> yeah, just have fucking well paid, well paid slaves. Yeah, what's on, what's servants now? What's servants in modern day? <laughs> Assistants. <laughs> there you go. Live in that, like a email nanny. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. We'd still do all this stuff, but maybe we could just get other people to do more of the other bits. Yeah. Go on a holiday. Finish doing our house up. Same things everyone in the world wants to do. Isn't it funny? Mm. Really, not that much more. I want uh, a new kitchen and <laughs> a holiday. Then I'll be happy. Yellowstone back on the TV. New kitchen. Perfect. Oh, that's a funny question. How's Colin adjusted to the Tyrone, Tyrone Bay life? Has he sold any tickets for the club yet? <laughs> well, yeah. In amongst that week there, he's away selling raffle tickets. <laughs> Big old stores. Kieran does that at his gigs. So those he'd be doing a raffle at the SSE. He'd be making fucking forty-two grand a night on selling man. raffle tickets. And you know what the prize is? A ticket to another gig he's doing. <laughs> permit schemes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the fucking who's the dodgy permit scheme guy? Uh, Ponzi. <laughs> Tony Ponzi. Uh, right, we got it. We'll get. We'll GTF the fuck out of here. Um, have you? Cho- you have to choose another NI comedian to run Lavery's. Who are you picking? Is this for our staff? Yeah. Fuck. Honestly, yeah. Ar- Aaron, probably. <laughs> probably Aaron. To be fair. And it'd be good for about a week or two, and then, you know. Yeah, he would be away a lot, though, which would be difficult, but yeah, I would trust Aaron, you know. He's I, good. Would, I would trust William. I would trust William. Um, he does a lot of MCing for us, and there's like a few times you're like, he sort of will. Run it for us a bit. Yeah. It's good. Uh, yeah. Mayhall. Mayhall. He's not a comedian, but yeah. Except he would just, he would whittle it down to like two people that he can listen to. Yeah. And they'd be like, Wednesday's McCarney and Woodsy. <laughs> Thursday's McCarney and Woodsy. Next week, McCarney and Woodsy. <laughs> Thursday, McCarney and Woodsy. Yeah, he'd be very, he'd be very brutal with who you'd lie on. Yeah. yeah. 
And then you'd have a fall night, you'd be like, it's just McCarney. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then I'll just be like, it's basically a, me doing a DJ set with the two bands in them. Never seen a guy work in the music tech business. Is that what that would be? Sound tech business? Oh, guy knows three bands. <laughs> he's, and he's at every show. He listens to the 1975. Yeah. And who else? Biffy Clyro. Biffy Clyro. <laughs> John Mayer. And he'd be like, you know who I heard about yesterday? Bombay Bicycle Club. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a takeaway in arts. I mean... But anyway, yeah, probably. Yeah, right. We'll get out of here. My ears are sore from uh, keeping these on. Cheers for joining me for our questionnaire today, Maureen. Cheers now. Um, get your tickets for the live Jenner Banner podcast. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, killing myself to make videos for it. It's going to be great. Um, Can't wait for all my uh, wedding anniversary surprises, too. We're sitting on that table up there. Oh, shut up. That up. big black no. ass. It's not fair that you bought other people present. <laughs> well, no, they're for me. But. Um, what else? Vicker Street on the 8th of September. Yeah. Uh, everyone else is more excited about that than me. Begley's, Don't say that. Begley's, but I know, but at this point, oh. like Begley's booked, uh, you know, accommodation. Oh, yeah. Woodsy's coming down to stay. Yeah. Uh, everybody's all up for it. It's going to be basically like a big party down in Dublin. If you want to come down, anyone? That's the way to bill it. There you go. More you should work in PR. Because it is, it's going to be. We're all going, all the comedians are going, all of our friends are going, and all my, you know, rented family, basically. It's going to be all, uh, just the, of us. the Nordy invasion. Yeah. It's funny that we only live up the road, and, uh, you know, you didn't even know they called us Nordies till you... No one says Nordies. Yeah. It's a horrible thing to say. It's fucking shite, Taylor Wheaton cunts. Come see me anyway, 8th of September. Makes sense. Uh, we'll have a big party in Dublin. And Maureen's paying for everyone's accommodation. Yeah, Colin's, 5 buy, billion. Colin's buying everyone a drink. I will. So you actually will. I'll buy everyone a drink. I'll buy uh, many, many crates of that Tesco, what do you call it, beer door? Do you remember that shit? Oh, the do wee stubbies? Shit? It, was, it was fucking nice We too. were talking about this the other day, weren't we? Beer door. I loved them. <laughs> the grenades. The grenades. <laughs> oh, they were nice they beer. Were, they, they were genuinely nicer Are than like... still around? No, people caught on too quickly. Oh, you they can't, were £3 you, and yeah. you got like 18 of them. Yeah. <laughs> Great, you can't sell, yeah. You can't sell a twenty-four pack for four pound because it was like when you're going. I don't want to drink cider, but I'll drink this with the same less bad, but it's the same price, and you're actually it's worse. Great, I love them. That was my all my carrots as a student. Nice we yeah, which is beers. There's something fun about a smaller beer though. Yeah, because you think you're safe, but you're not. Because you drink oh, that's three times as much. Uh, yeah, I'll buy everyone a beer. Duh. Let's buy everyone a shot. And you know where like Baker Street's all the tables, so we'll just have all the tables full of shots and everyone's just shot at the same time. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And then they'd be like, Who are all these Nordies? Good crack. Yeah. I mean, look at them. Yeah. All coming together. We'll do that. Absolutely. Everyone gets a free t shirt. Um hey, right, we're out of here. Much. Cheers, guys. Speak this to is you, heavy. Speak to you next week. See you later. Okay, love you bye. Okay, love you bye.